He's a Democratic candidate for the 13th Congressional District, uh, Steve Harrison. Is Bill still here? I just, I, I just want to know how he really felt about Vito Fasola. <laughs> Well, listen, I want to say thank you to Peace Action. Oh, I see. Okay. I want to say thank you to Peace Action uh, for everything that they've uh, done here and everything that they always do. And I'm listening to everybody and I'm saying, okay, I guess we've said just about everything that has to be said. All right, we're talking about, and, and we've done everything that has to be done. So the question is, uh, if we've talked about uh, the war, how we got into it, we talk about the war, how we haven't gotten out of it. We talk about its effect on our environment, on our veterans, on energy. We talk about its effect on so many different things. The question is, what can I possibly add here today? What can anybody else add other than what has already been said? We've had five, six speakers. I'm going to tell you what I can add. I can add my voice. Yeah. I can add my voice, and I will add my voice. And I ask each of you to add your voice right now. Right. Say, I'm with you, Steve. And we're against this war. And we're for peace. This is a day that we must understand what peace is about. You know, uh, Reverend, when you talked before, you talked about peace. And oddly enough, I've heard a lot of talk about war, but you've talked about peace. A number of years ago, I'm going to talk to you, can I talk to you about just two things, all right? I'm going to talk to you about April 4th. April 4th, everybody knows with respect to Martin Luther King. What they don't know is that 10 years before that, this is also a celebration day for something else. Do you know that today, or yesterday, is the 50th anniversary of the peace symbol? Did you know that? It's the 50th anniversary of the peace symbol. Contrary to what many people believe, they have all sorts of theories on it, it was actually something that was created in England, 1958, by a gentleman. And if you really want to know what it is, and he explained it, it actually is a circle that represents the earth, and it shows a man in desperation, in the center, asking for peace. That's what it's about. And the peace symbol is something that, if you really think about it, has come to mean so much more than peace. Because the word peace is like a chameleon word. It has so many different meanings to it that are really good. It's about justice, it's about equality. So we found out that over this 50 year period of time, it was not just about peace, it was also about the women's movement and about the civil rights movement. And it was used you know, all the time within respect to those areas, right? Then another April 4th, 10 years later, a fellow by the name of Martin Luther King died. Martin Luther King was, to me, a true hero. He was one of the most, one of the most one of the best orators that you could ever hear, one of the most quotable people that you could ever hear. And Martin Luther King was a person who understood that when he talked about civil rights, that was what he was best known for, that civil rights and peace were, for all practical purposes, synonymous. That's what it's about. And that women's rights, well, that's what it was about. And Reverend, you talked about who Martin Luther King was back then and what he spoke about. And when, I have to get past here because it keeps reverberating in your ear. When he talked about civil rights, many people forget that he was one of the great peace activists of his era also. And he integrated so well the, the, the idea of peace and the idea of peace and civil rights. So, one year before he died, to the day, April 4th, 19, April 4th, 1967. That's why April 4th should really be, in my opinion, Peace Day. Okay? April 4th, 1967. He gave a speech, and the speech was a very long one, but it was not about civil rights. It was about peace in Vietnam. And he made a statement, and the statement he made in the middle of that, if I can just quote it, I want to make sure, because I never like to quote wrong. He said, a time comes when silence is betrayal. And you know something? That, that particular quote, most people wear, you see it at civil rights marches. And what's interesting about it is that it wasn't spoken in the context of civil rights, it was spoken in the context of peace in Vietnam. All right? Betrayal. So here's the question I ask you. I can add my voice. You're all adding your voice. Where are our leaders today on Staten Island? Why are they not here? 
doesn't it come a time when we say that silence is betrayal, like Martin Luther King said? And I will not betray this nation because I believe in this nation and I will stand up for this nation at all times by speaking. One other thing, on that same speech, Martin Luther King actually was able to put together, he was so eloquent, I can't tell you, all right, I love it. You read the speeches of Martin Luther King and you're learning an awful lot in a very short period of time. So let me read this one quote for you. Because today we're talking about relating, we're talking about relating, sorry about that. You know, I just try to get closer. <laughs> they talk about relating this war in Iraq to what's happening here in America. So let me tell you what Martin Luther King said back then and how he was so able to put things together and put it in perspective. This is about the Vietnam War, spoken April 4th, 1967. He said, so we have been repeatedly faced with the cruel irony of watching Negro and white boys on TV screens as they kill and die together for a nation that has been unable to seat them together in the same schools. So we watch them in brutal solidarity burning the huts of a poor village, but we realize that they would never live on the same block in Detroit. I could not be silent in the face of such cruel manipulation of the poor. And yet today we find that we still have a war that is being fought with the lives of the poor, the money of the middle class, and for the benefit of the rich. Martin Luther King is prophetic when he speaks back then. The way he can put things together and make you realize that what's happening over there has such an effect on what's happening over here. Everything that happens in Iraq affects what happens here. We cannot be silent. I will not be silent. Will you be silent? No way. Thank you very much.